The Lost Recording. A group of teenagers finds an old, unmarked cassette tape with a recording of a seance. After listening, strange occurrences start happening around them, as if they've unleashed something from the tape. August 12, 1994. In our small suburban town, where the most exciting event was the annual fall fair, the discovery of the old, abandoned house on Willow Street sparked a sense of adventure among us teenagers. I'm Jack, and this is the story of how my friends and I stumbled upon a mystery that would forever change our understanding of the world around us. It was a lazy summer afternoon, the kind where the sun seemed to hang motionless in the sky. Mia, Tyler, Liz, and I were on one of our typical explorations, driven by teenage curiosity and a desire to break the monotony of our everyday lives. The house on Willow Street had always been an object of local lore, a relic from a bygone era, its windows boarded up, its stories long forgotten. We entered cautiously, the old wooden door creaking open to reveal a world frozen in time. Dust motes danced in the slivers of light piercing through the cracks in the boards, illuminating a living room that looked like it hadn't been touched in decades. Old furniture lay draped in sheets, and cobwebs adorned the corners like delicate lace. Our exploration led us to a small study, where amidst the clutter of old books and papers, Tyler found a cassette tape. It was an unremarkable object, its label long since faded, but to us, it was a treasure, a whisper from the past waiting to be heard. Later that day, in the safety of my room, we gathered around my dad's old cassette player, anticipation hanging heavy in the air. The play button clicked, and for a moment, there was only the hiss of static. Then, a voice emerged, fragile yet clear, the voice of someone conducting a seance. The name, Eleanor, echoed through the speakers, sending shivers down our spines. The tape was a window into a world we had never imagined, a world where the boundaries between the living and the dead seemed to blur. We listened, captivated as the voice spoke of spirits and realms beyond our understanding. That night, after Mia, Tyler, and Liz had left, I lay in bed, the words from the tape replaying in my mind. Little did I know that tape was more than just a recording. It was the key to a door we had unwittingly opened, a door that led to a path twisted with shadows and whispers. The events that would unfold in the coming days would challenge our beliefs, our fears, and our very perception of reality. The evening after our discovery was draped in a suspenseful silence as we sat huddled in my dimly lit room, the mysterious cassette tape resting like a dormant relic on my dad's old cassette player. Mia, Tyler, Liz and I exchanged anxious glances, our usual bravado subdued by the weight of the unknown. Hey, quick reminder, don't forget to subscribe and like for more videos. With a collective nod, I pressed play. The tape player hummed to life, its gears turning with an almost reverent slowness. A crackle of static hissed through the speakers, filling the room with a palpable anticipation. Then, cutting through the white noise, a voice emerged, fragile, distant, yet unmistakably real. It was a woman's voice, tinged with an accent that spoke of decades past. She began with a ritualistic chant, her words rhythmic and hypnotic. We call upon the spirits, she intoned, and a chill ran through the room, as if her invocation had reached across time and space. The voice mentioned a name, Eleanor. It was spoken with a reverence, a plea for contact. Eleanor, we seek your presence, the voice called into the void. The atmosphere in my room shifted, the air growing denser, as if in response to the voice's summons. As the seance unfolded through the speakers, we sat motionless, captivated. The woman's voice wavered, at times confident, at others laced with an undercurrent of fear. She spoke of a veil between worlds, of spirits lost and wandering. The static crackled and popped, punctuating her words with an eerie punctuation. The recording was not long, but by its end, we were enveloped in a silence that seemed to echo with the remnants of the voice. We looked at each other, eyes wide, each of us processing the surreal experience. The tape hadn't just played a forgotten seance, it had transported us to another realm, one that hovered just beyond the veil of our reality. Liz, ever the skeptic, was the first to break the silence. It's just a tape, she said, though her voice lacked its usual conviction. Tyler, always the enthusiast, was full of theories about ghost hunters and mediums from the 70s. 
Mia, thoughtful and introspective, wondered about the woman on the tape. Who was she, and what had driven her to reach out to the spirit world? As for me, I felt an unshakable sense of connection to the voice, a feeling that we had uncovered something profound, something that was not meant to be forgotten. Little did we know, our first play of the tape was just the beginning. The door had been opened, and the shadows of the past were already seeping into our world, eager to tell their story. In the days following our first encounter with the tape, a subtle yet undeniable shift occurred in our lives. It started with small, almost dismissible incidents, but soon, these anomalies wove themselves into a tapestry of unexplainable occurrences that we could not ignore. I was the first to notice, lying in bed one night, the edges of sleep just about to envelop me, I heard it. A faint whisper, my name, carried on the stillness of the night. I sat up, heart racing, scanning the shadows of my room. But there was nothing, only the familiar shapes of my furniture bathed in moonlight. The next day Mia shared her experience. She was in her kitchen when a cup, positioned well away from the edge, inexplicably shattered on the floor as if pushed by an unseen force. Her eyes, wide with a mix of fear and intrigue, told us this was no ordinary accident. Tyler's encounter was even more chilling. He swore that he saw a figure in the corner of his eye while walking home one evening. When he turned to look, there was nothing but the empty street. Yet, the sensation of being watched lingered, a cold presence at his back that hastened his steps home. Liz, though reluctant to admit it, had her share of the strange as well. One evening, her dog, usually calm and friendly, suddenly growled and barked at an empty corner of her living room, hackles raised, eyes tracking something she could not see. As we gathered and shared our experiences, a sense of unease settled over us. The tape, with its eerie seance and invocation of the spirit Eleanor, seemed to be the catalyst for these strange happenings. We began to speculate. Had we unwittingly opened a door to something otherworldly? Was the spirit of Eleanor or something else reaching out to us from beyond the veil? Our once skeptical minds began to entertain possibilities we would have laughed off just weeks before. The air around us felt heavier, charged with an energy we couldn't explain. The nights seemed darker, the shadows in our rooms longer and more sinister. The tape, once an object of curiosity, now sat on my shelf like a Pandora's box, its secrets unleashed into our world. We were no longer just a group of friends bound by shared interests. We were now united by a shared experience, a journey into the unknown that had only just begun. The whisper from the past had turned into a chorus of shadows, and we knew we had to delve deeper to understand the mystery we had uncovered. Determined to find answers, we embarked on a quest to unravel the history of the tape and its connection to the old house on Willow Street. Our once carefree summer days transformed into a mission, each of us driven by a mixture of fear and fascination. Our first stop was the local library, a treasure trove of historical records and old newspaper archives. Mia and Liz scoured microfilm reels, searching for any mention of the house or its former occupants. Tyler and I delved into books on local folklore and the supernatural, hoping to find clues about seances and spirit communication. It was Liz who made the first breakthrough. She found a newspaper clipping from the late 1970s about a medium named Margaret Henley, who lived in the house we had explored. According to the article, Margaret was renowned in our town for her psychic abilities and seances. But the story took a darker turn. She had vanished under mysterious circumstances, leaving the house abandoned and her fate unknown. The revelation sent chills down our spines. Could the voice on the tape be Margaret Henley? Was it her seance we had listened to? The pieces of the puzzle were slowly fitting together, but each discovery only deepened the mystery. Our next step led us to the town hall's record room, where dusty ledgers and old property files awaited. We found the original blueprints of the house and learned about its construction in the early 1900s. The house had passed through several hands before Margaret Henley became its owner. Armed with this information, we decided to revisit the house. The air was thick with anticipation as we stepped through the creaking door, the history of the place now casting a new light on its neglected corridors and peeling wallpaper. Our exploration led us to Margaret's study, where we found remnants of her life, old photographs, letters, and more tapes similar to the one we had found. Among these items, a journal stood out. Its pages were filled with Margaret's elegant script, detailing her experiences with the spirit world. She wrote of a spirit named Eleanor, 
a restless soul seeking closure. As the sun set, casting long shadows across the dusty floor, we gathered around the journal, piecing together the life of a woman who had delved too deeply into the unknown. The line between past and present blurred, and we felt a connection to Margaret, a woman whose quest for knowledge had led her to a similar path as ours. We left the house that evening with more questions than answers, but with a newfound determination. We were no longer just teenagers playing at detectives. We were the custodians of a story that bridged the divide between life and death. The mystery of the lost recording had become our own, a journey into the heart of the unknown. After our visit to the abandoned house, we returned to my room, the air around us thick with unspoken thoughts. The journal and additional tapes we had found lay on my desk, tangible pieces of a puzzle that was slowly coming together. The first tape, the one that started it all, seemed to hold the key to understanding the haunting events unfolding around us. We gathered closely, a sense of solemnity enveloping us as I inserted the original tape into the player once again. This time, our ears were tuned to the nuances of the recording, listening for clues we might have missed. The voice of Margaret Henley, whom we now believe to be the medium on the tape, crackled through the speakers. With each word, a picture began to form in our minds, a woman deeply connected to the spirit world, yet perhaps tormented by its mysteries. As we listened, certain phrases stood out. Eleanor bound by chains of regret, Margaret's voice echoed, her tone laced with empathy. She spoke of a ritual, one meant to guide Eleanor's spirit to peace, but something had gone wrong. The static on the tape grew more intense, as if mirroring the turmoil of the seance itself. The second listening brought a deeper understanding of the events Margaret had attempted to conduct. Her words painted a portrait of Eleanor as a troubled spirit, one who had met an untimely and tragic end, her soul unable to move on. Liz, her skepticism slowly eroding, pointed out the urgency in Margaret's voice, a hint that she had felt a responsibility to help Eleanor. Tyler, eyes wide with fascination, theorized about the nature of the ritual and its possible connection to the strange occurrences we were experiencing. Mia, ever thoughtful, suggested we listen to the other tapes to piece together more of Margaret's story. As we delved deeper, the recordings revealed Margaret's growing concern about Eleanor's unrest, her voice becoming a conduit for the spirit's sorrow. The room grew colder as we listened, the evening light fading into darkness. The tapes not only confirmed our connection to the past, but also deepened our involvement in a narrative that spanned decades. Eleanor's and Margaret's stories had become entwined with our own. We ended the night with more questions than answers, but with a determination to help. It was clear that Eleanor's spirit was reaching out, her unrest somehow linked to the disturbances we were experiencing. We resolved to delve deeper into the world of seances and spirit communication. To find a way to help both Eleanor and Margaret find the peace they had been denied in life. Our journey had taken an unexpected turn, leading us into the shadows of the unseen world. The line between reality and the supernatural had blurred, and we stood at the threshold, ready to step into the unknown. In the wake of our discoveries, a bold decision was made. We would attempt to contact Eleanor's spirit. Our nightly gatherings shifted from mere speculation to intense preparation, each of us driven by a mix of fear and a need to understand the haunting connections we had uncovered. The setting for our seance was my attic, a secluded space where the roof sloped sharply and the outside world felt miles away. We created a circle with candles, their flickering flames casting dancing shadows against the walls. In the center, we placed the cassette player with Margaret's recordings, hoping it would act as a beacon to Eleanor. Mia had taken the lead in researching seances and spirit communication. She guided us through the process, her voice steady despite the uncertainty that lay ahead. We joined hands, forming an unbroken chain around the circle of candles, the air thick with anticipation and the faint scent of burning wax. As Mia began to chant, a hush fell over the attic. Her words were a gentle call to the spirit world, an invitation for Eleanor to join us. The candles flickered as if in response, and a cool breeze swept through the room, though the windows were closed. Eleanor. Mia's voice echoed softly. We seek to communicate with you, to understand your story, to help you find peace. The atmosphere shifted, the air growing denser, as if charged with unseen energy. Then a voice emerged, faint and distant, 
like a whisper carried on the wind. Help me, it pleaded, a simple phrase laden with years of sorrow. Our hearts raced, the connection to Eleanor established, fragile as it was. She spoke of her life, a tapestry of joy and pain, and her tragic end that had left her bound to the world of the living. Her words were a mosaic of regret and longing, painting a portrait of a soul lost in the shadows. The room grew colder, and the candles flickered more violently, as if reacting to Eleanor's unrest. We asked her about the ritual, about what had gone wrong. She spoke of a broken circle, of a darkness that had seeped in, anchoring her to the house, to the realm of the living. As the seance drew to a close, Eleanor's voice faded, but her final words lingered in the air, a plea for release, for an end to her wandering. We sat in stunned silence, processing the profound experience. Eleanor's story had woven itself into the fabric of our lives, her plea for help, now our responsibility. That night we made a pact. We would help Eleanor find the peace she had been denied. Our journey had taken a new turn, one that would require courage and a deep dive into the unknown. The shadows of the past had reached out to us, and we were determined to answer their call. Following our eerie yet enlightening seance, a sense of urgency enveloped us. We were no longer mere bystanders. We had become active participants in a spectral drama that spanned beyond the veil of death. Our mission was clear to confront the forces that held Eleanor's spirit captive, and to set her free. That confrontation began on a stormy night, the kind where thunder rumbled like ancient drums and lightning illuminated the sky in spectral flashes. We returned to my attic, the epicenter of our connection with Eleanor, armed with newfound knowledge and a resolve steeled by the gravity of our task. In the heart of the storm, our circle of candles seemed more defiant, their flames flickering fiercely against the gathering darkness. Mia led the ritual, her voice more confident now, echoing with the power of our collective will. We called upon Eleanor, inviting her to join us once more, to be the beacon guiding us through the ritual that would sever her earthly chains. The air grew charged, electric, as if the storm outside had seeped into the room. A silence descended, heavy and expectant. Then, with a suddenness that made us jump, the attic was filled with a cold, howling wind, the candles flickering madly in its wake. Eleanor's voice returned, more potent than before, its ethereal timbre laced with desperation. The circle... Complete it, she urged, her words almost lost in the tumultuous air. We understood. The ritual that had bound her was incomplete, its broken circle a metaphysical shackle. As we began the chant to complete the circle, the room seemed to convulse with unseen forces. Shadows danced wildly on the walls, forming shapes that defied understanding. The temperature dropped, our breaths turning to mist, as if the very essence of the night had invaded our sanctuary. The wind grew stronger, howling with the voices of the past, a symphony of lost souls. Objects around us began to shake books tumbling from shelves, as if the house itself was resisting our efforts. But we held fast, our voices uniting in the chant, a beacon of light in the overwhelming darkness. Then at the climax of the ritual, a blinding flash of lightning illuminated the room, followed by a thunderclap that shook the very foundations of the house. In that ephemeral light, we saw her, Eleanor, a spectral figure in the center of our circle, her face etched with sorrow and gratitude. As quickly as it had begun, the storm within the attic abated. The candles steadied, their flames now a gentle flicker. Eleanor's form faded, but her final whisper resonated through the room, a heartfelt thank you that echoed in the now tranquil air. We sat in stunned silence, the aftermath of the confrontation leaving us both exhausted and exhilarated. We had faced the unseen, battled the forces of the past, and emerged victorious. Eleanor's spirit was free, her chains broken by our collective courage and determination. In that moment, we realized the power of unity, of belief, and of the enduring strength of the human spirit. In the wake of our otherworldly confrontation, a profound sense of calm enveloped us. The attic, once a nexus of spectral energy, now lay bathed in a peaceful silence, as if acknowledging the monumental shift that had taken place within its walls. We, four friends bound by an extraordinary journey, sat amidst the flickering candles, 
processing the realization that we had altered the course of a spirit's fate. The days that followed were marked by a quiet introspection. The world around us seemed more vivid, yet we were acutely aware of the invisible veil that separated us from the mysteries we had touched. Our experience with Eleanor had changed us, deepening our understanding of the unseen forces that weave through the tapestry of existence. In our town, the old house on Willow Street stood silent, its aura of mystery softened. We visited it once more, not as intruders but as bearers of peace. Where once the air had been heavy with the weight of untold stories, it now felt lighter, as if Eleanor's release had cleansed it of its haunting past. Our actions had repercussions beyond what we had imagined. News of our encounter with the supernatural spread through the town, our story whispered in hushed tones among the locals. We became somewhat of an enigma, our names linked to the miraculous transformation of a place once shrouded in fear and superstition. In a quiet ceremony, just the four of us, we returned to the attic. There, we lit candles in honor of Eleanor, a symbolic gesture to commemorate her journey and our role in it. We shared memories of the first day we found the tape, how little we knew of the path it would lead us on, and how much we had grown since then. The tapes in the journal we had found in Margaret Henley's house were donated to the local historical society. It was our way of preserving the story, ensuring that the voices from the past were not forgotten. In doing so, we created a bridge between the living and the spectral, a testament to the town's hidden history. As autumn painted the town in shades of orange and red, a sense of normalcy returned to our lives. But there was an undeniable undercurrent, a shared knowledge that what we had experienced had irrevocably altered our perception of the world. We looked at life through a broader lens, aware of the delicate balance between the seen and the unseen, the spoken and the silent. In the end, our journey with Eleanor was not just about freeing a trapped spirit. It was a journey of self-discovery, of facing fears and embracing the unknown. We had delved into the depths of the supernatural and emerged with a newfound respect for the mysteries that lie just beyond our understanding. As we moved forward, carrying the lessons of our adventure, we knew that the attic, the old house, and the memories of Eleanor would always be a part of us. We had touched the ethereal, and in return, it had bestowed upon us a wisdom that transcended the boundaries of our ordinary lives. In the stillness of the night, in the whisper of the wind, we could still hear the faint echoes of our journey, a reminder that some encounters leave an indelible mark on the soul. As the seasons changed and time marched forward, the extraordinary events surrounding Eleanor's spirit gradually settled into the quiet corners of our lives. Yet, the echoes of our journey reverberated within us, a subtle but constant reminder of the unseen world we had briefly touched. In the epilogue of our tale, life in our small suburban town resumed its usual rhythm, but for Mia, Tyler, Liz, and me, there remained a profound alteration in our perception of the world. We had encountered a reality that few ever experience, a journey that had both challenged and expanded our understanding of the universe. Our little group, once bound by the typical bonds of teenage friendship, now shared a deeper connection. We met often, not just to reminisce about our adventure, but to discuss the myriad mysteries of life and the universe. Our conversations delved into topics we never would have considered before, the nature of existence, the possibility of parallel dimensions, and the endless questions surrounding life and death. The old house on Willow Street, once a place of fear and uncertainty, became a symbol of our journey. It stood there silent and dignified, a physical testament to the events that had unfolded within its walls. Occasionally we would pass by each time feeling a sense of kinship with the structure that had been the catalyst for our extraordinary experience. As for the cassette tapes and the journal, they found a new home in the local historical society, where they were treated with reverence and curiosity. They served as a bridge between the past and the present, a tangible link to the town's hidden history. Our story became a part of the town's lore, whispered among the locals with a mix of skepticism and awe. In the quiet moments of reflection, I often found myself thinking about Eleanor and Margaret Henley. They were no longer just names from a bygone era. They had become part of our lives, their stories intertwined with ours. In freeing Eleanor, we had also freed a part of ourselves, from the constraints of narrow belief and the fear of the unknown. As the final chapter of our story closes, we step forward into our futures, carrying the wisdom and insight gained from our encounter with the supernatural.
We had peered behind the veil, touched the fabric of the other world, and returned changed. The experience had taught us that life is a tapestry woven with the threads of seen and unseen realities. And in the grand scheme of things, our understanding of the universe is but a small flicker in the vast expanse of existence. But it is these flickers, these brief moments of connection and understanding, that illuminate our lives with wonder and mystery. Our journey with Eleanor was more than an adventure. It was a lesson in the infinite possibilities that lie beyond the realm of the known. As we each move forward on our individual paths, we do so with open minds and hearts, forever attuned to the subtle whispers of the world beyond the veil. We have come to the end of our story. Thank you very much to everyone who has supported my channel with the join, and thanks button. Subscribe and like the video, so as not to miss the videos that we will upload in the future. Tell me what do you think about this story in the comments. I'll see you in the next story.